My name is Helge Fielitz. I am going to talk about the fundamentals on ultra wideband radar today. So we see this is a simple pulsed radar. It measures the distance it takes for a signal to travel between the radar system getting reflected from, from the target and traveling back. By knowing this time, the distance R can be calculated, as we see it on the left-hand side. If we don't want to measure the distance, but rather the velocity, we can use a so-called pulse Doppler radar, where the velocity of the target can be measured by measuring the Doppler frequency. You see that the velocity of the target relative to the radar system can then be calculated. Now, coming to ultra-wideband radar. We are using ultra-wideband pulses that are modulated with a carrier frequency, the so-called channel frequency. This signal is then amplified and fed to the antenna. The radar pulse shapes achieve nearly zero side lobes, which is contrary to a ranging frame or a ranging pulse. On the left-hand side, we see such an ultra-wideband signal in time domain. And on the right-hand side, we see the clean spectrum and frequency domain. Now, having transmitted such a pulse, how can we receive it? The signal is received by an ultra-wideband antenna and then amplified by a low-noise amplifier, LNA. It is then fed into an IQ mixer, which is also powered via a local oscillator. As a result, we have the baseband signal, which is then, then digitized using an IQ analog to digital converter. This digital baseband signal is fed into the symbol accumulator. And afterwards, the result is correlated with the known preamble. As a result, we get a so-called channel impulse response, or CIR. We are using ternary codes with near-perfect autocorrelation. That means we have almost no correlation side lobes. In other words, we have a much reduced noise floor, and therefore we can detect less reflective targets if necessary. We see such a channel impulse response, or CIR, in this slide below. Let's talk a bit about range resolution and maximum range. I will focus on range resolution here, which is related to the bandwidth of the transmitted signal. By having a bandwidth of roughly 500 megahertz, we get a range re resolution of roughly 30 centimeters, which can be further reduced by detecting the leading edge in post-processing. Especially for vital sign detection, the range res resolution is not of importance that much. It's rather the velocity, for example, the movement of the chest induced by breathing. The velocity can be resolved by applying a fast Fourier transform, FFT, across a stack of channel impulse responses. And here, the velocity resolution is key. It is related to the total observation time, as we see on the left-hand side. As a result, we get a so-called range velocity plot. On the y-axis, we have the distance to the target, and on the x-axis, we see the velocity, which can either be positive or negative. That's for today. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.